Hey there, sports fans and car enthusiasts. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going pre-war. Well, actually not necessarily pre-war. Pre-1950s cards, at least, from my personal collection. Uh, just a handful of cards here. Not everything I own, but some of the ones that I, I like the most here. Um, we're going to show off everything from 1948-49 Leafs down to a uh, couple of, maybe a T2 or one or two. Let's get into it. All right, folks, here's my stack of vintage cards I'm going to show off here. Just a little bit of a preview. I'll put them aside here so you don't get too much of a sneak peek of these. Uh, we're going to start off with a 1949 Bowman, Gil Hodges. Gil Hodges, uh, one of my favorite players. He was the manager of the New York Mets for you know, a short time. He died, unfortunately, of a heart attack far too young. Uh, great all-around player, Hall of Famer. Um, and I just had to own this card. Again, it's not in the greatest of shape, and I realize... These card holders are not doing it any favors. I need to get different card holders for quite, you know, some of these cards here I'm going to show today. I do understand that. Don't rip me too much for it. But uh, there it is, 1949 Bowman Gil Hodges. This is card number 100 of the 240 card set. As you can see there, or maybe can't, I don't know, it's got some definitive creases in it. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting here. So apologies for that. Try to get the best. You can see a big crease there right along the top. There's a couple more creases down here at the bottom. The back, you can see some of the creasing a little bit more. So it's not in any, you know, great shakes. Probably wouldn't even grade a one if I had it graded. But uh, I just wanted to have that card in my collection. So here's another one. I ignore the whatever grading company this is. Um, I just had to come across it. This is a graded too good, but... And it also has a big crease across it. But it is a 1948-49 Leaf Joe DiMaggio. Uh, I just really wanted to have a DiMaggio card in my collection. Um, one day I will have one of the DiMaggio rookies, hopefully. But uh, that day is still yet to come. But having this in my collection is nice. As you can see, the back is horribly chewed up. I'm not sure any card, any noteworthy card grading service would give this a 2. But... Whoever AccuGrade Sports Card Authentication was gave it a two. Um, again, I did not spend a whole lot of money on this. Thankfully, I think I got this for 40 50 bucks. So, I mean, that was worth, you know, throwing down some change to get this in my collection, even in the condition it is, just to say I own a Joe DiMaggio card. Put Joe aside, and we'll move on to 19, another 1948-49 Leaf, Ralph Kiner. Uh, he was the voice of the New York Mets for a long time as a radio announcer. This card's in actually okay shape. There's a couple of small creases here and there and a little bit of card loss, but this could probably grade as a solid one. Um, the back is fairly clean there for the card that it is. Again, always loved Ralph Kiner. And another card from the same era here, 1949, John Honus Wagner. I love this card for a couple of reasons. One, it's virtually impossible to own a legit Honus Wagner card for, you know, anything on the cheap. I was able to get this for less than 100 bucks. I think I got it at a card show, I believe. I can't remember exactly where. I got this several, many, many years ago. But the other reason I like it is that most folks know the story of why the original kind of T201 Honus Wagner is so rare is because they only printed a limited run of those before he spoke out about having his likeness represented with tobacco and tobacco cards. Yet here he is on a much later card here, where I believe he's the uh, manager. Uh, da, 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 I can't remember if this was a manager card or not. No, I guess it's I guess it's still listing him as a player here. So I guess it technically is a player card, although I thought, although I thought he was a manager by this time. But... You can see definitively there he is uh, chewing on a patch of tobacco, so uh, go figure. So I kind of like the uh, kind of double tundra of that card as well. So there it is, 1949 Leaf. So we'll move back to 1934 Gaudi. Benny Bingo, yes, this card is in chewed up, beat up condition, but I picked it up for $10 at an estate sale and couldn't go wrong with it. Um, the back is actually in okay condition. It doesn't have any 
you know, discernible creases anywhere through it, but clearly the outside of it has seen some better days. Uh, but 1934 Gaudi Benny Bengo. Uh, Benny Bengo has the representation of being the, I believe the number... I can't remember how much it how much it was, but yeah, it's the number one card in this series, and it's so it's actually worth in good condition quite a bit more money, even though the fact he wasn't a you know he was a he was a good good player, but he wasn't a legit superstar. So from the same year, I do have another much better card here. Um, this could pro might might pull out a two grade, but probably a one. 1.5 is a Jimmy Fox Hall of Famer from 1934 Gaudi, Big League Chewing Gum. The front of the card looks pretty good. There's some dings on the corners, no discernible creases. The back has a little bit of wear there. You can see on the bottom corner. But this is card number 29 in this series, and I've always loved Jimmy Fox. Wanted to have a card of his for representation of his great Hall of Fame career as well. Keeping in the Hall of Fame vein, and all of these are, you know, graded. They may not be number graded, but they're at least authenticated, as this one is. This is a 1923 W515 hand-cut Frank Baker card, just uh, graded as authentic by PSA. However, the card to me is in really good condition. There's no creases anywhere. There's a little bit of a corner lip there. The back of the card, on these hand-cut cards, where there's nothing on them, but it looks really clean. There's no, like smudges or dirt or ink mark or creases and having frank home run baker uh, in my collection is definitely something that i wanted so there you go 1923 w515 frank home run baker moving back to 1933 gaudy here we have 1933 roger hornsby graded 1.5 fair by psa um this is a card that i got in several bidding wars wars over this card for quite a while, um, trying to get my hands on one of these cards, I always wanted this card, especially this one because I just love the love the artwork on it. Um, wanted a Rogers Hornsby card, finally was able to get one. Um, I think it came down to the wire. I can't remember how much I spent on this. Again, it wasn't too terribly much. It might have been around 150 or so, maybe less. I honestly can't remember. Now you see here for a PSA 1.5, at least back then, there were some creases. There's a light crease here in the top corner. Also a, a light light to medium crease going right across the middle there. I don't know. Again, my camera's not the best. I apologize for that. So I don't know if you can see that, but there are some light creases. You can see better on the back there. You can see that top crease there. And you can kind of maybe see the start of the little crease. Doesn't go all the way through the card there. And there's a little bit of residue gum stain on the back too. But at least it was good enough to get graded a 1.5 by PSA. And so happy to have that in my collection as well. Moving on to a 1921 W516 hand cut of Tris Speaker. Again, this is just an authenticated one. Uh, it's in, you know, got some dings in it. The corners are certainly torn up. Um, there's a slight crease in the top left corner there. But Tris Speaker is a great player, Hall of Famer. Uh, another one I wanted to have into my collection. Um, in the back here, you can see, again, hand cut, nothing on the back. There. But uh, great one to have, and I just love the old-timey look, of especially these hand-cut cards. Um, you know, the T206 tobacco cards, um, they're super expensive to get your hands on, even commons of them. I do have a couple of them, um, not really, that I'm, none that I'm showing here today. But, you know, to get a star card in a T206 is kind of, at the time anyway, was a little bit out of my price range. So you can still kind of get your hands on some of these hand-cut cards, even get them graded. For a reasonable price and get your hands on some good true vintage hall of famers in there as well speaking of from the t206 is actually this is a 1909 sweet capital t206 card christy matthewson authenticated by SG, sgc this is the white cap version and this card as you can see is in what i consider pretty pristine shape there is a minor very very minor crease there Three of the four corners look sharp. There's a little bit of fuzziness on, well, actually, on this bottom one here. The back looks really sharp. There's a little bit of a smudge mark there. But for a card this old and this great a shape, and at least an authenticated SGC, I could not pass this up. Um, 
Again, I don't remember how much I paid for this, but it wasn't a ton. I'd say maybe $200, maybe $250, maybe less. I really can't remember. I wish I could. Um, but this is a special card to me. This is one that I'm super happy to have in my collection. Christy Matthews is one of the best pitchers of all times. And I own one of his cards. So there you go. There's Christy Matthewson. Another one that I spent, I did admittedly spend a little bit of money on, was this 1926 W512 hand-cut Babe Ruth card. Um, but I spent a lot of money. I'm not talking anywhere in the thousands or anything like that. But I spent a few hundred bucks on this one uh, to get an authenticated uh, SGC graded, uh, not graded, but SCG authenticated hand-cut card of Babe Ruth. You can see the top is a little, you know, whoever cut this initially did not do the best job. So I'm not sure what this card would grade, but getting your hands on any kind of true Babe Ruth card from the era in which he played, uh, that's tough to do uh, at any price point. So there's the back again. Uh, so having this in my collection is certainly something very, very special to me. It's not one I'm looking to sell or recoup any money on or anything like that. Again, I don't really... You know, I don't own a baseball card shop, so I, I rarely sell. I do do some trading. Every once in a while, I'll do some selling. But uh, not a, you know, it's not like I run a business and looking to reap any kind of major profits here. Again, this is just for my personal collection. Having a Babe Ruth in my collection, very important to me. And lastly, we'll follow up with another Hall of Famer. This is a T201, one of those double fold, Mecca double folders ones. This is of Mordecai Three Fingers Brown, Hall of Famer. He had a great story. He had his uh, hand or his, his uh, fingers severed. I believe it was in a, a piece of farm equipment. I want to say, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, but still managed to pitch, and actually his lack of fingers helped him develop a really kind of crazy fork ball, you know, wild pitch that hitters had a really hard time identifying. And it made him a great player, um, despite his uh, the tragedy of his losing several fingers. He was able to pitch to a Hall of Fame career, and so this one I think I spent two hundred bucks on it. This is a PSA graded two. Um, those double folders. I think this one might be slightly undergraded for the age of it is and the condition it is. I might grade this a three, the three and three point five, maybe even a four. I mean, it's beautifully preserved. Um, there's really not any true damage to it other than some few corner dings to it. Um, but again, another great one that I am very happy to have in my collection. I think I might have shown this one and maybe the Bruth off in one of my earlier episodes. But um, just wanted to share a few of these with you today. Um, tell me if you have any pre-1950s or pre-war era, you know, Stark and Hall of Famer cards yourselves. And if so, what you have, what you're proud of, or even what you're looking for, what you'd love to acquire someday. And we all know the obvious ones, yes. We all want a 52 Mantle. That's not really pre-war anyway. We all want, you know, a Ty Cobb T206 or, you know, a tobacco card. We'd all love to have, you know, uh, a uh, Cap Anson card or any other greats from the, you know, the early days there. Um, but these are the ones, some of the ones that I have. Again, not a ton because... Uh, it tends to be a pricey acquisition anytime you purchase any kind of any kind of old cards from you know pre-1950. But there's just a handful of them, folks. I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please just be sure to you know click click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so because I'm looking to bump those subscriptions up even more. Always putting great content on this channel anytime I can, so we'll keep you fed with plenty of great stuff coming forward. That's it, folks. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.